Hi there. So this is a quick video to talk about advanced settings in WSL. So here you have link in the video description as well. But what is important here is that when you install uh, WSL, there are two important files to configure everything. So you have the WSL conf that we already saw that in Linux, we added a new entry to, to, to set the default user. And then you have this file .wsl config, which is inside Windows. And this one, you set some global parameters and how to share resources and so on. So I invite you simply to read this file. Okay, you will find all the information. So WSL conf is located in Etsy and Linux. And let me go here and to show you already was playing here. Let me clean. As you go to Linux, look at that. You have many files and you have it there. As you want to see what is inside that one. Okay, and let me go. And I will use simply cat. Catenate. And basically, I just put this entry to define the CFD user board. This file can take many more actions. And to show you a little bit about this one, so read here, not going into details. And here you have all the options that you can set in that file. Is that another important file? But the default options will be okay, or if you need to set only the user will be okay. But then you can. Uh, uh, you, you can change actions just to get better performance or to add uh, some other uh, attributes in, in how, of, uh, about how you share the, uh, the resources. Then you have this one, WSL Canfit. So this is located here in Windows. So you just go there. In my case, I already opened there. And look at that. There you go. You have the file. Uh, be careful that it's your Windows. And if you are, you are not familiar with this, you need to show the hidden files because the files uh, with that extension, okay, with the dot tends to be hidden. So I open here the file. And basically, in my case, I only have this option. So I'm using WSL2. So this is created automatically and then limiting the memory to not more than 20 gigabytes in that in that virtual machine, but you can put more or you can command this one and it will use all the resources. Also here you can add some other entries to limit uh, the resources of the of the hardware, of course, and so on. Uh, so here WSL config, just keep reading. And I advise you to read this whole document because there is a lot of interesting information here. So here you have a template for the WSL config. So you can copy and paste this one. It's a good template. You might not need to hold the options. And this is the one that it is located in Windows. And here you have all the options. So since that memory size, okay, the default, you split everything, number of processors, and many more options. So there are some other experimental options and you can play around. So also you have a template here. So you can also copy and paste this template. But the I, I often I just use the uh, the minimum actions which are these two and set those files and that's all. So yeah, this is all that I wanted to talk about. Uh, these advanced options and at this point, uh, it is up to you know to educate yourself about WSL. You have a lot of options here, so read everything. And to mention about also the virtual machine. So we talk about these global options for the uh, WSL, but if you use a virtual machine, when you install, you click there and you will see that you have settings and here will be kind of the equivalent. So you're going to set memory, processors, storage, and some other options. Here you have more advanced stuff. So pretty much is the, is the equivalent. Remember that this, the performance when you use this one, it tends to be lower than the performance in Windows Subsystem Linux, because here you need to allocate resources and so on. The big advantage that I like this one, that you will get the whole GUI, the Linux, the Linux installation, as if you were working in a in a machine with a native installation, and then also it's a way much easier to to move 
uh, the virtual machines. Now you copy that in the directory and it's just two files that you need to move. So it's quite easy instead with WSL, you need to import, export, and sometimes can be tricky. In particular, what I have found that is very tricky is to, is to run uh, in an external hard drive. Instead, being where it's extremely easy, it's out of the box basically to run in an external hard, hard drive. Instead, WSL is a little bit tricky, but also you have that information here. I was thinking how to, you have it there, connect USB devices. So you have the instructions there, but have in mind that it can be a little bit tricky. So that's all. Thank you for your attention. See you next time. Bye.